uh, we just celebrate him and should celebrate him in every part of our life every day. I got it. And so we want to uh, take a moment. As you know, we've been uh, looking at the various names of God as we find them in the Old Testament. Uh, and each name represents a moment in time in someone's life or someone's history when they call upon God for a particular reason. And we've looked at Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Jireh and, and several others that speak of healing and, and, and different things. And today we want to be looking at the name Jehovah Shalom. And this is a beautiful, beautiful name uh, that God answers to. Now, he answers to all these calls, but isn't it interesting how in our lives there are certain times when we need him for particular reasons. And so we call on him to answer our prayers and to look into our lives and to help us to understand who we are in him. And so today we are looking at and the name Shalom. And I think probably most people who may not even be religious would understand and know that name, Shalom. If there's a Hebrew word that is recognized probably more than others, I think most people know that that word is peace, Shalom. It is a famous word that we read in various places besides Scripture, but it is particularly meaningful when we listen to it from the Scriptures. The idea of Jehovah Shalom. When you look at that word in Hebrew, it really translates as the harmony of relationships or a reconciliation passed upon by the completion of a transaction. But I like that, the harmony of relationship, peace, shalom, the harmony of relationships, or what takes at the completion of the pain of a debt. Anybody just paid a debt? Don't you feel good when you walk in there? They got that last little thing in the back of your, you know, little thing the bank gives you, and you go in there and you slap that down, and you put your check there, and you're done. Isn't that great? Anybody? Now, I've never experienced that, but I'm sure somebody out there has. <laughs> I'm still in the middle of most of mine. so. Uh, but that's a great thing when we think about that. And what does that make you feel when you're able to... Doesn't that give you a sense of peace? A sense of peace. And when we think about shalom and relationship and being defined as in relationships, isn't it wonderful to be at peace in relationship? Whether it be with God, whether it be with your neighbor, whether it be with a family friend, a family person maybe you had been at odds with, the idea of shalom in relationship is wonderful. And especially when we consider God and being at peace with God. That is a powerful thing when we recognize it and think about it because it expresses the deepest desire of the human heart. I really believe that. I think to have peace is the deepest desire of the human heart. Isn't it good when you find yourself at peace? When you have glean through everything and you have done everything and you have been at odds and you have you know, you see what happens when that takes place is you can't have peace when you're at odds with someone or when you have a broken relationship with God or when uh, things aren't going right or, and you're indebted to somebody for something and doesn't that cause a great sense of unrest has anybody ever woken up in the middle of the night worrying about a debt or a relationship where you just can't sleep because it weighs so heavy on your heart and you just don't have the peace to sleep? The absence of that peace is a horrible thing, but most of the world lives with it, even Christians. We struggle with peace oftentimes in our life. We struggle with it. I want you to know today that the Father, the Father is the God of 
peace. And the Son, Jesus Christ, is our peace. And the Holy Spirit of God produces the fruit of, of peace. God is the peace. Jesus is our peace. And the Holy Spirit produces the fruit of peace in our lives. God is our peace because he sent Jesus. Before Christ came, there was no peace between heaven and earth. God was dissatisfied with how the world was. And the only solution he had was to send the Prince of Peace, his son, to live among us and to reveal to us the peace of God and how we can have that peace for ourselves. And Jesus lived and died. And when we saw him die on the cross, when he was taken off that cross, and when he was put in that tomb, and then on the third day when the tomb was empty, the world was at peace with God. He is the peace. And today, the Holy Spirit, the counselor, the one who God or the Lord has left with us, you know, he said, it's better that I go away because if I go away, I'll send you a helper who will let you live life. And the fruit of the Spirit is what the work of the Holy Spirit is. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is what? Peace. So the Holy Spirit today is at work in your life to give you shalom. And so today we gather and we think of God and, and we want to say, Jehovah Shalom, God give me peace. Peace like a river. Give me your peace. It is well with my soul. Who can sing that song and mean it without the peace of God in your life? Because I'm telling you, if you don't have the peace of God in your life, you can't have, it can't be well with your soul. There's something wrong there. God is a God who gives us the peace that we search after. He is the God of peace. Jesus, the Son of peace, and the Holy Spirit produces the fruit of, the fruit of peace in your life. And it's still hard to get sometimes. Like a butterfly just flutters and it, it I remember what, uh, is it, I remember uh, the science project that Joan and I did for our kids in the eighth grade. It was a, it was a bug collection. <laughs> to this day, I remember running down the street with one of those little nets in my hand trying to catch a butterfly. Honest. When they wanted to throw that away, I said, don't you dare. <laughs> Frame it. <laughs> it's the only A I ever got in class. It wasn't even mine. But a lot of times, peace is like that in our lives. We, we think we have it, and we might for a moment, but then... Something happens in our life, and all of a sudden, where is it? It seems to have vanished. It seems to have fluttered away. It seems to have gotten out of the net. Gideon was a man who was searching for peace because there was no peace during Gideon's time. Israel was at a low point in their life, and they've known a lot of low points in their lives, but they were scraping the bottom. When Gideon came along, the Mennonites were, were beating them everywhere, on every front. And there seemed to be no victory at all. And then all of a sudden, God comes and he finds Gideon and he says, Gideon, get up, I want you to go and rescue my people. And he was disheartened. He was dragging along in life, dejected. 
disappointed that Israel could do no better than it was doing. And now God is saying, you go rescue them. You go lead them. And I will give you victory. And so the scripture that I read today, Gideon decides to make an offering. And so he goes and he gets this kid and, and the leavened bread, unleavened bread and all this and, and, and the uh, broth or whatever it was. And, and so he brings all this stuff and the angel of God is there and, he, and he's not, he doesn't really recognize him at this moment as the angel of God. But he brings all the, and the angel says, lay that right there and pour out the broth and step back. And he touched it with his staff and it was consumed as an offering unto the Lord. And then and only then Gideon recognized that that had been an angel of God and it overwhelmed him to the extent that he built an altar and he named that altar the peace of God. Jehovah Shalom. And according to Scripture, it remains that way today. I'm not sure where it's at. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't point to you on a map. But that's what the Bible says. Jehovah Shalom. He said, I have peace in my life with God. I am at peace with the task that God has called me to do. He named it, the Lord is Shalom. The Lord is peace. And I want to say today that we all should know God as the Lord of peace. If you have Jesus in your life today, if you love the Lord and you're living outside that peace, you shouldn't be. Because God has made a way for you to know him as the God of peace, the Lord of peace. His desire for your life is peace. He does not want you to live in anxiety, to live as a disconnected part of society, to live in disharmony with him or anybody else. It is God's design and desire that you be at peace in your life. It is God's design for you to feel that way and to be that way. He has called you to that. He sent Jesus to give it to you and he's now given you the Holy Spirit to create it in you. We have no excuse for not living in the peace of God. None whatsoever. You know, doesn't the word peace just have a certain little charm to it? Really? You know, peace. Peace like a river. I like the word because it takes me to a place in my life where everything's okay. Where everything is calm. Where everything as, as God has intended it to be. It's pleasing to my ear to hear that word. And not a person sitting here today can tell me that you don't want to have it in your life. I will absolutely guarantee you that there's not one person here that does not desire to live in peace. Not one. And if you say you don't, then I want to see you right up here after church. We got to talk. Everybody wants peace in their life. Who wants to live in disharmony? Who wants to live in anxiety and anxiousness? And uh, who wants to have panic attacks? Who wants, I mean, come on now. Jehovah Shalom. Peace be to you and in your life. Now, there are different kinds of peace, but only one can offer true, lasting peace. John 14, 27 tells us, and this is Jesus, of course, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, let it not be afraid. Okay? 
That's God's peace. That is God's shalom for you. And if you read that closely, you will see what the definition of peace is. The definition that Christ has given us, he said, I give you my peace, not as the world gives. So there's two kinds of peace, right? There's the peace he gives and the peace who gives? The world. I give you my peace, not as the world gives, that I give to you. And then he said, let not your hearts be troubled, nor let them fear. So if you listen closely, what's the definition of peace? It's the absence of trouble and fear. To have the peace of God is to mean fear is absent in your life and trouble is absent in your life. The peace the world gives oftentimes includes trouble and fear. Because when you live in the peace that the world gives you, you're fearful of losing it. And you probably will. And if